My name is Matt Luzada, and I'm an artist that makes community-specific public artworks. I'm going to tell a story about the storefront theater. This is a project that happened in Lyon, Nebraska, and we, this is a town of about 850 people, and they're experiencing what many rural towns in America and abroad face, which is their downtown cores are often now vacant because commerce has moved away, entertainment has moved away, jobs have moved away. So I was invited to do a project in this town, and that's I often do. I start with an outdoor living room. And this is a way of collecting voices uh, from people that usually don't go to city meetings or want to go to some kind of event. This is just passerby, and I ask them questions about identity, history, you know, secrets, problems. From this outdoor living room, many people express that they uh, wanted to see downtown filled with life again. And so that was one of the criteria of the project. I asked about secrets, and someone actually mentioned um, there's this particular building, just a storefront with no building behind it. So this actually became the site of our project. And the city owned it, so it became easy. And this is the project here. So we basically made this fold down door, seats pull out, and a, project, or a screen comes in, makes Main Street into an outdoor theater. And then actually closes back up and disappears, and it just becomes folklore for the people. That's how we did it. So we involve many people in this little town and around. And so there's many construction people who contributed to this project and helped build this entire project. However, this one other guy came into the picture, Bill, a retired postal worker who makes amateur videos with his cat. Um, and I went over to his house, and in his basement, he had made a theater. He recreated a 1950s uh, coffee shop, and then he made this uh, full set of a <laughs> back to some TV show. And then he bought a building downtown and uh, made these sets including a full spaceship. So I thought, this guy's got to be part of this project. Um, he only works with his cat, but I said, well, we work with people, and we make a movie called Decades, um, which is a document, uh, it's like a documentary about the history of this town from the beginning of the town, the founding fathers all the way through. So we put out in the middle of Main Street a request for stories and photos and any kind of memorabilia about this, because Bill's going to now make a movie for this theater. And these are the people that dreamed up the town. So people came and volunteered their time, and uh, Bill started becoming the man to organize this movie. So we use this theater, you know, we go old switchboard operator, he's green screen, he's shooting in these sets. We got people vintage cars to come by, people dressed up in costumes. So we turned this town into kind of like a movie set, and we started developing this movie. A guy with a drone came by from the town, started shooting, so we got really lovely shots. The movie he made about 45 minutes long. And then we opened the theater. Um, this is a town that's this is actually dead every night. Um, so all these people come out and they uh, watch the movie. One of the things I thought was a takeaway was the idea that you know people can sit together, they can kind of dream together. So this is a little bit of a call to arms about looking at their downtowns, quite met up. They're in their downtown looking at a story about their downtown. That's the story. Thank you. Thank you. Do I um, see your lines anymore? Um, so, who is now managing the theater and continuing to provide programming? Yeah, um, actually all the work I do, there's an ethical component, which is that um, if you come in into a town and you do a work and then you leave it, it falls apart or it could, you know, hurt somebody. So, at all my projects, I have to have a host organization that will champion this in the future. This particular one was um, a collaboration between the Center for Rural Affairs, actually I think now there's the one that wrote the grant, but now it's the city that runs the entire thing. You actually check it out through the library. So I'm going. Did you check out the theater? Yeah. Okay, cool. If you want to do a private event, it's 50 bucks, I think, and then everybody else is free. 
So you said like other projects, and have you done this elsewhere? And you know, similar ideas in terms of revitalizing the community. Yeah, I mean, my projects range in the physical form, but a lot of times it's about you know trying to use the spaces people live in with the issues they have to find some kind of platform for the dialogue. Um, so yeah, I've done it many different places. I, uh, this this work was actually a little bit similar to another work that I done a couple years ago, where we transformed a band house into a theater. Transformed. Um, I was in Alabama. So. We can't get into all the works, but yeah, I do work with people in their, their built environment. Um, so, thank you. Magical. Uh, how did they find you? <laughs> and um, I was wondering, I really like the living, open and living room idea. But I also, you know, ask critical questions. I wonder who might not uh, come to that space. Yeah. Um, in terms of inviting, it usually just shows up in my email. Um, somebody has seen a work and they say, listen, we want to write a grant, we want to bring it in. So that's been happening for the last six years. Um, someone wrote an Art Place America grant in uh, this little town. I actually went to school with her, so that one actually had a connection to me. I went to grad school with her. She ends up in this little community. She says, hey, can you do something here? Let's write a grant. So that's how that happened. In terms of people who show up um, at that living room, we do do some advertising, we do try to get some people, but really the most exciting stuff is when people see it on the main street and they come by and volunteer, or they just see it and are attracted to it out of curiosity. The best parts of those conversations is when you have the cross dialogue, someone says, you know, we used to have a trolley in our town. Someone says, no, we didn't, and they're working out something right in front of me. So these sessions often are quite profitable for me because I'm learning a lot about the history or the identity of the town. That I wouldn't I'm have access to. Uh, who might not be there? Oh, yeah, who might not be there? I don't know what the situation was there, but do you think it was representative or do you think. Of the town? Uh, yeah. I'll say this I think that, um, yeah, I've done these, and I think, you know, I'm usually the one that's taking in all this information and trying to use that as design criteria to make it work. Um, so far, um, most of these projects go through, so I think I am listening in a way that's, you know, catching the, whatever the word is, the gist of the town to be able to custom fit it in. I had one project where the city did, where this town got pissed off, <laughs> and they told me they didn't want it, so we had to redesign it. But it's a lot of work, you know, you do live in room, you come to the idea, you present it to them, if they like it, you move forward. Do you think every place has a, a secret? Is that part of the sense of place? That, that's true. This is true. Every place has a secret. And thank you. It's a perfect place.